teammate Sarah Kim is not gonna make it to state this year. No matter how many hours she practices, no matter how many great ballots she gets back, she's not going. Yeah, you might be saying, oh, Joanne, don't be so hard on your teammate. But the simple matter of the fact is that the NSAA, Nebraska Schools Activities Association, considers Sarah an 18-year-old high school senior with 4.0 GPA ineligible for competition. And this doesn't just apply to speech, but to one act, music, and sports. And this is all because she was born in the wrong country. Now hold on, before you go launch another GoFundMe page to build the wall, don't worry, she's here legally. She came as a bona fide foreign exchange student with an F1 visa. Like other American students, she was scared to join the speech team. However, after two years of learning the language and building up the courage, she decided to give it a shot. Unfortunately though, where a native Nebraskan might be welcomed into the activity, Sarah was told by the state that her eligibility clock had already run out. And she didn't even know there was a clock. So today, we will go over the history of Nebraska's eligibility rule, the problem it creates, and some simple solutions to ensure that situation like Sarah's never happens again, but fairness is still achieved. Let's start with learning about Nebraska's eligibility rule. In all extracurricular activities, the NSAA states, in order to participate in sub-district, district, or state competition, a student must have been a member of that team for at least 20 school days prior to the competition. And then a problem or perception of one showed up in the late 1980s. The accusation surfaced about certain Omaha private schools using their international outreach to go on recruitment missions to get the tallest and fastest kid from overseas with an offering of full tuition to their school. Regardless of the fact, the noise was too much and the NSAA sprang into action. They added to the bylaws that international transfer students shall be eligible for a maximum of 180 consecutive school days. And the 180 day period begins with enrollment in any of the United States high school. Even if you're not in Nebraska your first year and have never heard about this rule before. Now that we have briefly looked into what this rule is all about, let's jump into why this is a major problem for international students. According to International Center for Education Statistics, extracurricular activities provide a channel for reinforcing the lessons learned inside the classroom, offering the students the opportunity to use the academic skills in a real world context and are thus considered a well-rounded education. A study done by Lauren Steinberg, a psychology professor in Temple University, indicates that nearly 31% of students who had the extracurricular involvement, had a GPA of 3.0 or higher, compared to just 11% of students who had no extracurricular involvement. If extracurricular activities are this important, then why are foreign students being excluded? It is important, especially for international students, who often feel isolated, separated completely from their friends, family, and former way of life. For example, remember Sarah, when Sarah first arrived here, she did not know what activities were offered at her school. However, after her first semester, her friend suggested that she should join the school musical, a non-NSAA sponsored activity since there is no competition involved. Then after that semester, she decided to try some other activities like speech. In speech, she made lifelong friends and she even had a great chance of making it to state. However, the joy did not last very long. Her dream of competing at state or even districts was taken away by the eligibility rule of the NSAA. Her friends, whom she competed with, shared in wins and losses with, went to the postseason for their shot at gold medal, while she had nothing to do but watch from the sideline. According to Sarah, this was one of the most hardest 
and stressful things she ever had to do. And it'll repeat itself again this year. The problem gets a little more complex when it comes to team activities like one act. This year, Sarah wanted to audition for the cast, but when she was ruled ineligible, she was only allowed to participate as a crew member. Our school's coach felt that our small number of actors in the short season would make it too difficult for the team to have to recast the show for district. And unlike our sports teams, which offer freshman A, B, C games and a full JV season, there's no such thing as JV theater. Yes, our school offers a musical production each spring. However, if you are a person like Sarah, who wants to learn about acting and performing, but as she readily admits that she cannot carry a tune to save her life, there goes your last opportunity. And on top of all of this, the biggest problem about this rule is that this rule is never delivered clearly to the student. As you can see, this policy unfairly singles out many students like Sarah, but there are some simple solutions to the problem. First, international students should have a choice of when their clock begins. For example, a student joining speech as a junior would make it no more expensive to the NSAA than that same student's joining speech as a freshman. In theory, if we are letting international students join in every activity during year one, then why would we turn them away from that same activity years later? Second, we should exclude academic competitions and only limit it to sporting activities where a competitive advantage can be gained by foreign recruitment. Let's face it, there are numerous football and basketball programs out there looking for the next freak athlete to take their program to the top. For example, according to NJ.com, Patterson Eastern High School, located in New Jersey, have included at least 13 players from Nigeria, Paraguay, or Puerto Rico over the past six years. But are speech coaches really scouring the side streets of Seoul for their next star or extemper? With the new NSAA rule that indicates that speeches be presented primarily in English, a notion that foreign students could provide a competitive advantage for their team is problematic at best. Can you imagine me delivering this in my first language? 나는 내가 이번 라운드에서 이겼으면 좋겠고 스피치를 하게 될수 있어서 영광이었어. Yeah, imagine judging that. Yeah. <laughs> lastly, we should have a simple and transparent appeals process in which students' situations to be reviewed by an objective panel. Current appeals process require that students like Sarah be able to provide an evidence of hardship. They do not, however, consider it a hardship when school or state officials fail to disclose their policies in a timely manner. As you can see, international students are singled out so unfairly in the arts, but there are some simple solutions to the problem. Just because of a few people who misused the term international outreach, too many students are being affected by the so-called eligibility rule. Now, I have a confession to make. There is no Sarah Kim, but there is Joanne Shin. And I won't make it to districts this year, or state. I'm not saying we should abolish this rule, but simply, Let's alter some factors about the rule so that both native and international students could benefit from this rule. Let's help the next international student compete in fairness and never let them think that they were born in the wrong country. No one wants to watch from the sideline. <laughs>